Life is a combination of two things, a certain amount of time and certain amount of energy. Time is rolling away. You do something, you don't do something, you're happy, you're unhappy, tick, 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 it's going away for all of us, it doesn't stop for any of us. We cannot say, today I didn't use it, let me roll it back. There's no such thing. Time is just rolling away. So the only thing that we can manage is our energy. I feel like we should start with just a deep breath because this is the biggest audience of Impulsive we've ever had. There's, there's a lot of people here because the guest today is very, very special. So if everyone could join me in a... Just a quick inhale and exhale. I feel like that really just help break the ice. Here we go. I'd love to start the episode, but I do hear a plane coming. Hold your plane? Maybe we could just wait till after that plane passes. That will happen. <laughs> that will happen throughout or, the course or, of the day. We could probably... We could probably go. We could probably run it. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. That's the statistical fact. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Logan, you're, you're not on your typical Impulsive set, and you're absolutely right. The backdrop behind me is probably not fooling you. There's a good reason for that. We have a very, very special guest today. One of the biggest crowds we've had as well. I, this got to be, what, 700 to 1,000 people. I'd Closer to the ladder, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, standing behind the cameras right now. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, I'm going to say before this episode starts, take out a notepad. Honestly, this could be one of the most impactful, impulsive episodes we've ever had with one of the most special guests we've ever had. And it's actually why we're sitting outside. I got the opportunity from my dear friend and ex-roommate, Andre, to have this guest on our, on our podcast. And he said, the only way the only way he'll do it is if you if we were we able to do it outside and obviously with a studio in my garage that doesn't count i said you know what we'll move it outside for this guy cuz i really do i i believe in him and i was able to attend uh, an event that you guys had the other day and i i just learned how how badass and how full of wisdom this guy sitting across from me is so ladies and gentlemen without further ado we have in our presence one of the most prominent most viewed spiritual gurus in the world on the premises. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Saad Guru. I want to get into how you started this spiritual journey. I found that fascinating um, when I listened to you speak at Andre's. You were 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Still am. <laughs> Still am, I could tell. <laughs> Multiple successful businesses. And uh, you were praised in the town as as being a, a man of success, a man who had made it. And I, I probably should let you tell the story about your life. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I asked. I'm, I'm sure you've told this story so many times, but, you know, our audience hasn't heard it, or some of them may have, some of them may have not. And I know when I first heard it, I found it fascinating. So may, maybe just a brief... Uh, <laughs> introduction at how you got started into knowing everything in the universe. <laughs> I'm serious. He has all the answers. Wait till he starts, bro. <laughs> so, uh, see, I, this happened to me when I was just about four and a half years of age. Suddenly, one day I realized, actually, I don't know a thing. Don't know a thing means just don't know anything. If somebody gives me a glass of water, I would be staring at this glass of water for hours. Because I don't know what is water, I know how to use it. Even now, you know how to use water, but do you know what it is really? Hmm? Two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's textbook nonsense. <laughs> but, but what are molecules? But what are atoms? Like that? Right now, two-thirds of the planet is water, mm. covered with water, covered by water rather. It is available in all the three states, it's liquid, solid, air, gaseous, everything. Wherever if we want to search for life, we search for a drop of water. Somebody finds a drop of water, a trace of water in Mars, and now we think life is possible. So this is the very basis of our life. But do we know what it is? 
Actually, with all the scientific exploration, we do not know a single atom, we know how to use it. We… In the, even the invisible atom, we know how to break it, how to fuse it, how to make a bomb out of it, how to kill everybody from it, but we don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. So if I find a leaf, I'm staring at it for four hours, five hours. If I sit up in the night, I'm just staring at darkness for hours. My father being a physician, he started thinking that I need psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> Doctors, you know. <laughs> Same with Mike's dad. <laughs> yeah, he was right. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> see. Oh, it's him, I thought. <laughs> So, in this condition, they sent me to school. My mother said, uh, you must pay attention to the teachers, you're always at something else. So, I went and paid attention to the teachers. The kind of attention that they had never imagined anybody would pay to them, nobody had ever paid that kind of attention. I sit there and I know their past, present and future, staring at them, staring at them, staring at them. Sometimes somebody said, don't stare at me like this. I'm just a little boy, four, five-year-old boy, <laughs> but they're kind of uncomfortable the way I'm staring at them. So I went to school and initially they started saying things and I sort of understood what they're trying to say. And then I realized, teacher after teacher coming and making actually sounds and sounds and sounds. See, right now, I'm making sounds. Because both of us think we know English language, you're making meaning out of this. Suppose I start speaking in any one of the Indian languages, they will be just sounds for you, isn't it? We're just making sounds. This language is a conspiracy between two people. I make this sound, you make that meaning. I thought, I make that sound, you make that meaning, you know? This is the whole thing. So I stopped making meanings and just started listening to the sounds. And uh, every forty-five minutes, a new teacher will come and make sounds and sounds and sounds. It became very amusing and a big smile spread on my face. But they were not amused at all. <laughs> so I saw that there was no point and I went to school only when it was absolutely necessary. The rest of the time I kind of... I was had more interesting explorations in the world <laughs> So one day it happened, I mean now about uh, eleven years ago, this school where I studied almost forty-five years ago or more, they came to invite me for their 125th anniversary, school anniversary. I said, see, please, uh, why me? I was not just a bad student, I was not even a st student, I only came when it was absolutely necessary. Why me? They said, uh, see, our school has produced ministers in the cabinet, our school has produced sports stars, our school has produced cinema stars, but you are the only mystic, so you must come. I said, okay, and I went <laughs> I went there and stood up in the quadrangle to speak. I looked around, same oppressive buildings. And then I looked at this particular room and then I remember, I was around twelve years of age. One afternoon, uh, because at that time I'm in this condition, I don't know anything. If I pay attention to something, I can't take my eyes off it. I'm just looking at it, still trying to figure it out, what is it? So, they can't get my attention. So, he asked me a question, something. I just look at him. I don't even hear the question, okay? I hear sounds. I don't make meanings out of it, something. Everybody's blabbering something all the time. So, I just look at him and he tries to get an answer from me for about thirty-five, forty minutes. He tries hard to get… make me say something. When I don't know anything, what is there to say? So, I was in that condition at that time. For many days, I wouldn't speak. Because there's nothing to say, what is there to say? I don't know a thing. So I was just looking at him. After thirty-five, forty minutes of frustration, he got so mad. He came and held me by the shoulder, shook me violently like that and said, you must either be the divine or the devil, I think you're the later. Well, I was not insulted or abused by this. My problem is, what is this, what is that, what is that, what is that? One thing was clear, this is me. This guy confused me about this also. I look like this, what is this? Is this divine or devil? What the hell is this? Suddenly I didn't know, what is this? Hmm. Till now I was okay. 
I did not know what, anything about anything, but I knew this is me. Suddenly this guy confused me. So that is when I started sitting with my eyes closed, trying to see, what is this? Well, it took a few years, another twelve, thirteen years before I realized, what is this? And what was that? Huh? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> see, right now, what you call as myself is largely the boundaries of your body. Mm. We can do an experiment, actually. Can you? Sure, let's do it. So, uh, you hold both your hands together. And uh, with your eyes closed, what you do is you intensely rub it like this for about 30 seconds, as intensely as possible. It's going to get hot. I don't like this. I really don't like this. Now, so my skin is burning. Now, hold your uh, palms about four inches away from each other. Something happening between them? I don't know. Some kind of sensation happening between them? Yeah. Yeah, my hands are hot. Not about <clears throat> hands being hot. Between the two palms, is there something happening? I... I, I don't know. Please try it again, not... <laughs> not... not with pressure, but with speed. Yeah. It feels like there's like a magnet between the yeah. two. So there is a sensation. What I'm trying to tell you is, how did you fix the boundaries of your body? See, right now, do one thing. T take your right hand and touch your left hand. Is that you? Is that you? Yeah. Yes. Touch the chair on which you're sitting. Is that you? No. How do you know this? I... I don't know. I can get off of it and walk away and the chair... Oh, this... A uh, whole lot of people have walked away from their body, haven't they? What about all the dead people, huh? <laughs> Don't they come back on Halloween? I think I think uh, the most important notion here is to understand that human experience is 100% self-contained, which you talk about mm -hmm. no, very no, no. often. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. See, right now, you're fixing the boundaries of who you are only from the boundaries of sensation. Hmm. Where there is sensation, it's you. Where there is no sensation, it's not you, isn't it? Could it... Can I just ask a question? I don't want to get too far ahead, but I want to bring this back for the impulsive audience who may not be aligned with this way of thinking or know who you are exactly or your or your or mm. your approach. I, I have uh, uh, have always been one to have a tough time with with all of this. Me and Andre have had many conversations about it. I'm open minded to it, but at the end of the day, I always have a Verizon bill to pay. I have uh, health insurance that uh, needs to be you paid. Go to the phone bills. No, no, if you don't use the phone, there are no bills, actually. So. Oh, okay, oh. great. Right, right. <laughs> but I, great, I and I love that, but I've got, I've got bills to pay. No, 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 earn let's, uh, let's come to the Verizon later. Okay. Right now, first of all, how do you define who you are and what you are? Essentially, whatever is within the boundaries of your sensation is you. Whatever is outside the boundaries of your sensation is something else, mm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, right now, this water in this vessel, the, is this you? No. Before paying the Verizon, you need to drink water. Correct. Right? Yes. Is this you? N no, it's not. It's not. It's not. No. <laughs> it, see, like I said, yes, it's hard listen, for me listen, to even I... get on your level to answer the no, question, no, no. is the water in the glass me? It's you know, not, I've been you... taught that the yes. water in the glass is not me. Yes. but if I'm you trying drink it, here. If you drink it, <laughs> will it become you? See, that's where I don't... I don't know. No, no. Right yes? now, two-thirds two -thirds of your body is water. So it does. Or, it is me then. It is you. Okay. But then is it still you in the toilet after you pee it out as well? Uh, that's up to you to decide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll get flushed out. What are you? What are you? What are you going to decide? <laughs> well, if I feel like it's more, kind of goes through. You know what I mean? Like a car no, it doesn't go through. Please, hello, hello. It's not like gas. I know it's not like gas or engine oil. Here, your body is a certain composition of food that you've eaten, water that you drank, and mm. the air that you breathe. Yes or no? Yes. No, so I right agree, yeah. now, we're just using water as an example. Yes. If it's here in this vessel, it's definitely not you, it's 100% clear. Mm. But the moment you drink it, it goes and integrates itself into this body on some level. A part of it may go out, that's a different matter, but the rest of it stays, all right? So now that it is here, this water which is in this body, are you not experiencing this as myself? Mm. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. May I ask a question? And then no, like this is a legit question. I'm very new to this. 
No. You are not new to life. I'm only asking you simple questions. I wouldn't to be life. too sure. I don't know. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm here today. Uh, my my question is this: uh, If the water is me and I drink the water, no, no, I didn't say it's you. I just asked your question. <laughs> oh, okay. So is it or is it, it not? Wasn't. Well, he's in he's in the middle of a spiel, bro. He's not done yet. So maybe maybe put a pin in your question. No, no. The simple thing is this: Is it true? Your body is an accumulation of food, water, air, and whatever else you consume. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So similarly, the water is here. It's not you. You know that. But the moment it's inside, you experience this as myself, mm. isn't it? Mm. Why? Because it's within the boundaries of your sensation. So your idea of who you are is only because of the boundaries of your sensation. Mm. If you touch this, you know this is not me. If you touch this, you know this is me. Because there, here there are sensations, here there are no sensations. But boundaries of your sensation can be stretched. Simply if you did this, you will feel sensations between your arms, between your palms. Well, you have heard somebody had a whatever, an unfortunate incident and they chopped off somebody's leg. And uh, still, the experience of leg is still there, though the physical leg is not there. Because there is a sensory body. As there is a physical body, there is a sensory body. This sensory body, how large it is, depends on how intense your life energies are. If your life energies are very effervescent and intense, your sensory body becomes larger than your physical body. Why everybody is rubbing each other all the time is because they want to experience somebody else as a part of themselves. If your sensory body became as large as this space, you would experience everybody here as myself. This is what you are thinking is love. This is what you are thinking is sexuality. All that's happening is your sensory body, because of a certain moment of exuberance, has expanded. Because it's expanded, somebody feels like they are just a part of you at that moment. So now, what yoga means is, you make your life energy so exuberant. It takes some work. You make it so exuberant. If you sit here, the entire universe is a part of you. Because your sensory body is stretched like that. So your whole experience of life as to what is you and what is not you is determined by where there are sensations, it's you. Where there are no sensations, it's not you, isn't it? Correct. Where, where I was going with that question, I'm trying to phrase it the right way, is just, just that… Change the phone company. Yeah. It, leave, leave the phone. <laughs> forget the phone company. We don't need phones, right? <laughs> I guess, I guess and in half the country, that phone company doesn't work. Right. <laughs> Got it. I, where I was going with it is, is just that I think to a, a lot of people that listen to this conversation, this is a, 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 the conversation itself and the entire thought process is, is viewed by, by many people as a luxury, a luxury that many people don't have the time, the ability to, to uh, sit in and to understand where does my life force end? I have four kids. We live in a one bedroom, you know, apartment in New York. You shouldn't have made four kids if you have only one bedroom. <laughs> right. This is, okay. This is a okay. Thing. Cool. Well, I get. All right. I get it. Now we're talking about you know the moral morality of parenthood. I, I get it. But what I'm saying is, people find themselves in circumstances, whether they plan to be there or not, and life has a way of dictating how much energy we can we can devote to this type of extracurricular. Some would call it paranormal. Some would call it, no, you know, no, no. theoretical thinking. No, no, no. Thinking. You, you just, should not. Just you let me just ask not, you this question. No, one second. You oh, should not put labels on things that you don't understand. Perfect. You just okay. say, right now, I don't have time. I don't have energy to do that. I will come to that. Okay. Okay. But don't put names on this. That this is extracurricular. It's not no extracurricular. It is most fundamental to life. Mm. If you want to live a sensible life, it's important that you know at least what is the nature of your existence. Without knowing the nature of your existence, if you try to handle this, you'll make a fool of yourself with the world. Right. So now that we know that... Got it. And you ran us through that. Now that we know the nature of our existence... No, 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 we don't. <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought we just went through all this. I'm the water that I drank. <laughs> no, no, you don't come to a conclusion like that. It is opening up one possibility. This is for you to wonder. What is the nature of my existence, which he thinks is a luxury? I'm saying it's like this. You want to handle something. Let's say you want to handle this camera. You know nothing about it and you handle it. What will you produce, I'm asking? It's probably, probably some horseshit. Yeah. Yes. That's what life is for most people. That's what he's saying. Horseshit. In one room, they had five children. Why? 
There's one room you should know what to do. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. My, my, I guess my question is, if I go to the grocery store, right, and I get to the register and I'm buying my lettuce and all of my organic vegetables, and I get to the register and they say, you know, that'll be sixty-two fifty. No, no, and this, I to this them, organic I, vegetable and all is too extracurricular. Just buy it in Walmart. Huh? Okay, so I'm at the Walmart counter and, I, and they ask me for $62 and I say, but I have found out the fundamental principles of life and I have a life force that exists be, in between my hands when I rub them together. I, what, I, what I'm getting at is how do you how do you enthrall and ignite the masses to take part in this conversation about what life means? That's where I was trying to get to with this whole question. That's what I was well, taking the long see, route. I want, you to, I want you to understand, you're dismissing a whole lot of human beings as masses. There are no masses, there are individual human beings everywhere. If you, if you have the patience, if you have the compassion, if you have the involvement, even if you go into the slum, there also there are individual human beings, there is no slum dwellers there. Hello? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. This mass of people, there are no such people, there are individual human beings, every one of them is concerned about his or her life. Every one of them want to live well. I'm saying, if you want to use the camera well, the first thing is, to read at least the instruction manual, even if you don't go for a training, isn't it? Hello? Correct. Isn't it so? Correct. Yes, so correct. I'm just talking about the instruction manual for such a complex machine that's been given to you. The most sophisticated technology on the planet is this one, the human mechanism. Without knowing a thing about it, if you think you can handle it well, you cannot. <laughs> if I can just interject here real quick, I think that for me, when it comes to spiritual seeking, it boils down to the question of who am I, right? What is the nature of my existence? And the pointing, right, is to understand who I am, I have to first understand who I am not. And so I feel like he was um, touching on, like, under, most people are so identified with their mind and their body processes, and they think that is them. And so I think what he was trying to do is give a distinction as to the separation of, of who you are and what your mind and body are. That is one aspect. First of all, I'm saying, if you want to conduct anything well, will you conduct it well if you know everything about it? Or will you conduct it well if you know nothing about it? The former. That's all. Yeah. You talk, you want to stand in the grocery line. If you are smart, you will never stand in the grocery line. I have not stood in a grocery line for years. <laughs> <coughs> all right, in for decades. Right. Why? Because you grow your own Because you're, you're so Sadhguru. It doesn't matter, but somehow. <laughs> You will not end up doing basic things for the rest of your life. You will get to do something better because every human being is wanting to do something better, wanting to do something bigger, wanting to live bigger. Yes or no? Yes, but I don't think many human beings are willing to activate on their desires. I say this all the time. Everyone wants bigger, better, yes, yes, faster, that's the whole thing. more expensive, more valuable. They are only complaining like this. Right, but aren't willing to do what it Those takes to make it happen. To understand what is the nature of their life and act upon it. So, so, the, so the curiosity that would lead to the answer to that question, and it also, it sounds like what originally drove you to meditate on that mountain, because I know, again, at 25 years old there, you had a, like a spiritual awakening where you said every cell in your body was some sort of ecstasy. You had no sense of time and you kept having these revelations. And, and one time you sat outside for 13 days and you opened your eyes and you thought it had been, what, I think you said 25 minutes? So did that sense of curiosity, is that what led you to, to, to go down the path you went? See, we must understand, it is intrinsic to human intelligence to want to know something more than what is there. If you leave your dog out here, he's just sniffing out everything. Even he's curious, he wants to know everything that's there in this garden. What's wrong with the human beings? The only thing that's wrong is they've, they've arrived at too many conclusions, either because of religious beliefs or philosophical beliefs or ideologies or some nonsense that they've concluded and they've lost the sense of the intrinsic nature of your intelligences, wants to expand, wants to know. This is not somebody has to teach it to you. This is natural. You leave a child, it wants to look at everything, isn't it? So where did you lose it? Because you made up your philosophies of uh, socialism. I, uh, if I can just riff on that just for a second, for, 
For me, when I was growing up, a lot of my friends called me, like they gave me the title of truth seeker. And it was because I asked so many questions relentlessly and tried to poke holes in, in what a lot of people would say. And I You're see- really unplugged, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I, I believe in you. <laughs> Carry on. And so you, you speak about how creating conclusions and beliefs about the world when if you really scope out and take a macro view of like, we really don't know what's going on here within humanity. If we scope out and we see that we're a blue marble hurling around a gas of fire at incredible speeds, it's like, take yourself back and realize that the beliefs that I made about, you know, just dogmas and, and religions and politics and everything that you hold so close is hindering us from being able to look at things for what they actually are. And so if you could just speak on how creating beliefs and conclusions about everything destroy our ability to seek, I think it would be very valuable. How many of you believe in God? Just raise one hand. Okay. Got about five people? Six people? How many of you believe you have two hands? Just raise one hand. Do you believe you have two hands, Milt? Of course. He's, raising, he's raising them both hand. just to prove yeah. it. So I'm asking you, do you believe you have two hands or do you know that you have two hands? Both. Really? Yeah. I was both. If you know you have two hands, where is the need to believe you have two hands? One follows the other. No. Why not? If you know something, why do you have to believe it? If I know something, why do I have to believe it? Yeah. you Because I, I believe one follows the other. No, no. I believe the truth. I have two hands. That's the truth. I believe it. See? See, the word believe means, the word believe essentially means you do not know something, but you believe it is so. True, but you could believe and know something. See, I believe you are a good guy. What does it mean? See, you don't know that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know what okay. you are, but I believe you are a good guy. Okay. I believed he's nice and I went to him and he was terrible. So are you saying forget about the belief and just no, stick no, to what we saying. know? But first understand the distinction between knowing something and believing something. Got it. So whatever we do not know, it is most wonderful of you and human of you to see I do not know. Because I do not know is a tremendous possibility. Tremendous possibility. The moment you destroy I do not know, your entire learning and expansion process has come to a cease. And this is what you're doing with your belief. That you believe this, you believe that. All these days people were saying, I believe God. Now they're saying in California, I believe in myself. I don't know what that means. Ooh, I believe in God and I do know that there's a God. Hmm? So you're saying to sacrifice my belief so I'm I can not know asking things? you to do anything. I'm asking you to look at the distinction between knowing something yeah. and not knowing something. But what, is the okay. what is the metric for, with, for which something goes from belief to knowledge is is the not knowledge. I just want to. We're talking about knowing, right? So let me dis make the, a is, distinction between knowledge and knowing. Okay, is the knowledge is an accumulated information? I know this, this, and that. By knowledge means I have accumulated information. Today, everybody is knowledgeable about everything. This doesn't mean to say they know it. They know it through the phone screen, everything in the universe, but they don't know it by experience of anything. So knowing is by experience. I have two hands. Is my knowing. I know it is there, all right? Even if I close my eyes, it's there. If you argue with me, it's there. It's there anyway. So belief is something else. Right now, I know something. I do not know something. These are two facts of life. So if you live in truth, you will know some things. You will not know some things. What you do not know, naturally, your intelligence will want to know. You don't have to seek it consciously. The moment you see, I do not know, your intelligence will start working. The in-between thing is, what you do not know, you want to believe and make yourself feel like you know it. And that's caused tremendous trouble to human beings, assuming things that they do not know. I think that's uh, one of the biggest problems we're facing right now in our country. I don't, I don't know how long you've been here, but um, I think it's safe to say America's probably the most divided it's ever been especially with the pandemic going on. Well, you had a civil war, this is better than that. Yeah, it is better than that. <laughs> but I wonder how close we are to something like that happening. No. Like, like truth, truthfully, we- Election we, time, everybody and... gets hot, it's okay. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I wanted to build off sure, of his, sure. his knowing versus believing. 
Uh, I, I don't remember which school of thought, if it, if it was Plato or Aristotle, but um, do, do you believe that all knowledge comes from what is gathered by one of the sensory uh, um, parts of life, by one of the senses? Is that your belief? You see something, you believe it, you smell something, you believe it, or is there, a, or is there room for faith? Is there room for metaphysical understanding of, of certain things? Do you leave that open or do you have to experience it through one of the senses? See, uh, if you go by your sensory perception, Right now, I touch this and I say, it's cool. No, I don't know what this is. Only because it's cooler than my body, I'm saying it's cool. If somebody else who is much cooler than me <laughs> touches this, they'll say this is warm. Mm. Yes or no? Yeah. So I'm saying, your experience of senses is a very relative experience. It's good enough for survival, not good enough for knowing the nature of what it is. For survival process, you're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, which is what you're saying, to go to the grocery store, all this is good enough. But if you want to know what it is, you cannot know through your senses. How do you know? I want to get into that. How do you find out what it really is beyond your senses? What's the, what's the practice that gets you there? <laughs> it's not about a practice. First of all, see, if you want to cross a border, first you must get to the border, isn't it? Mm. Right now, you want to go to Mexico. You can't go from here, you must at least get to the border first. So if you want to know, this is why I started with the border, but uh, you went into something else. I said the border of your experience is sensations. If something comes and touches, it's a sensation. If you see something, it's a certain kind of sensation. If you smell something, it's a certain kind of sensation. Everything in your experience is sensation. It may not be sensational, but it is sensation. That is why we are calling them as sense organs. They create sensations in the system. These sensations are vital if you want to live in this world, if you want to survive in this world. Otherwise, you wouldn't know anything. Suppose you had no ears, eyes, nose, nothing. Would you know what is here? Nothing, isn't it? Total blank. You fall asleep, what is happening? Your heart is beating, your liver is functioning, kidneys are functioning, everything functioning. Now they're telling you even your brains are functioning. But you don't know a thing simply because all the five gates of sensations have closed down, isn't it? Mm. So your experience of life is right now limited to sensory perception. And that is the reason all this confusion, because the nature of sensory perception is such, if you see this part of my hand, you cannot see this part of my hand, isn't it? So you always perceive everything in parts. Now with these parts, you are trying to make a whole. It doesn't work like that. Right now, people's understanding of what creation is, what existence is, is it's a trillion piece jigsaw. But they find three pieces, put it together and they form something and say, this is it, this is it, I believe this is what it is. You can believe whatever you want. If we work hard enough on you from your childhood, we can make you believe any damn thing in the universe. Just know this. Right. I agree with that. Is that a shortcoming of humanity? Is that is that is that because our brains have not developed to a point where we we are no longer limited by what we see, feel, touch, smell, hear? Or is there a way to break that boundary? And have you done it? See, uh, human brain, there's nothing deficient about it. The deficiency is people are trying to operate without using the user's manual. They don't know a damn thing about their brains. That is their problem because they have lots of beliefs. They have lots of beliefs and beliefs and beliefs, mm. so they can't use their brains. But the moment you see, I do not know something, do you see your brain starts working in a certain way? Mm -hmm. huh? I, I, th I think saying I don't know is one of the most powerful statements in the, in the it world. It starts exploring immediately. It's through exploration. You have come to America. I'm saying, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. People came to America because of exploration, not because they believed. Nobody believed there was a land here. They thought they were going to India. <laughs> Yesterday, somebody asked me, what is, what is your experience of, uh, uh, you know, that Columbus uh, landed in America and called the people here Indians? What do you think about it? How do you feel? I said, I'm glad he didn't land in India, but I'm <laughs> sorry he landed here. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you, t- you talk about this uh, necessity for curiosity and, and this uh, I don't know or questioning. See, the- don't use the word curiosity. Okay. Curiosity is a very surface thing. Okay. But when you realize I do not know, there is a pain of not knowing. It, right, is- and, it leads, and it leads to that, to that questioning, right? One of, the, one of the things that I, uh, uh, some people use that aren't as, uh, you know, that don't sit on a, a meditation uh, system to get to that place of curiosity, sorry, to get to that place of questioning and not knowing and being open to looking at things in new Can ways. Can I supply some vocabulary? What's that? Seeking. Seeking. Thank yeah. you so much. Like I said, brand new to this. One thing some of these people use is uh, mind-altering drugs. Ayahuasca, psilocybin, lysergic acid. What are your thoughts on, on getting to this, uh, to this place of understanding through alternate means? See, uh, it's like you can jinx the brain to create all kinds of experiences. Just by strongly dreaming about it, you can do it actually. People do it. You can hypnotize somebody and make them go through all kinds of things. If you're only hunting for experiences, it's fine. But what I'm talking is not about hunting for experiences, a genuine exploration. If you put on a VR and sit here, you may go to Mars right now. But you've not gone to Mars, that's all I'm saying. So by making some chemical changes forcefully, by introducing something, whether it's of natural origin or it came from the back street of uh, something, it doesn't matter where it came from, you stimulate something chemically and an experience happened. If you… if you did it just one time and you… you use this as a way to understand that I'm capable of these experiences. You know, yesterday I was just doing the daily quote today morning, The quote was something like this, if I can repeat that. Uh, It is like, whatever was the most wonderful and the peak level of emotion or experience you had, make that your baseline in your life. Because you're capable of that, all right? You're capable of that. What you're capable of must happen. What you're not capable of will not happen. That's a different matter. What is… what you're capable… if you're level… if you're capable of a certain level of joy, that must be your baseline. Now you will explore what's beyond. Now most people think these peak experiences happen only when somebody loves me, only when I pop this pill, only when I smoke this stuff. This is the wrong way to do it. If you used it just once to understand that my body and my, uh, you know, experience is capable of reaching such a peak and then you start living there, that's great. But every time you have to pop something and tomorrow you're sick, what's the point of that? So I have your peace and happiness. I know I've, I've asked you all, what do you truly want, right? What, like, what do you truly want in this life? And we, in the 3D material world, are chasing a lot of things because of the feeling that it's going to give us, right? And so peace and happiness seems to be the answer amongst a lot of people that I ask. And I hear you talk about how peace should be the fundamental baseline foundation in which you live, not the highest aspiration. And so if you could speak for people that don't have that peace currently within their life and want that to be the basis for their whole life, how can they do that? See, uh, this is the most unfortunate thing in the world, that most human beings just do not know how to be at ease. They're not even at ease. Forget about joy, forget about blissfulness. There is no ease. They're all in this jangled state. And now they say, this is how human beings are. Doctors say, because that's their business. Pharmaceutical companies say, that's their business. See, for example, United States, we're here in USA. So let's take this as an example. This is the most affluent country on the planet right now. Why does an individual person or a society or a nation seek affluence? In the first stage of affluence, it's a choice of nourishment. I can eat what I want. If I'm hungry, I'm thinking of money. Why? Because if I have money, I can eat whatever I want. In the second level of affluence, it's the lifestyle. I can live the way I want. I can do things that I want to do. So now in the most affluent country where there is a choice of nourishment and a choice of lifestyles like nowhere else, why are you spending 3.25 trillion dollars as your health care? Something must be wrong with you. Hello? When you have a choice of nourishment and choice of lifestyle, why are you sick, I'm asking? 3.25 trillion dollars is more than India's budget, all right? 
annual budget for 1.2 billion people. So where do we go wrong? Well, that's what we are looking at. Huh? <laughs> no, it's not about greed. The problem is without understanding, if you do not know how this camera functions and you use it, mm. I'll assure you this is going to break down in three days. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. One who knows it, they may use it for a lifetime. <coughs> One who does not know it will break it in three days, yes or no? Yep. That's all you're doing. Yep. No, no, it's not about them. <laughs> you are in charge of your life, you don't know a thing about this. Because you think by fixing the outside world, everything will be okay. Because roads are done, bridges are done, airplanes are flying, you think everything is done. No. A human, ex human experience essentially happens from within you. Outside conducive atmospheres we want to create, that is there. See, it's like this. If, if you look at it, he articulated this in one way. Essentially, what is it that you want? You want pleasantness of the body. If body becomes pleasant, we call it health. Do you want it? So badly. Yes. So badly. If it becomes very, if it becomes very pleasant, we call it pleasure. If mind becomes pleasant, we call this peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we call this joy. If your emotions become pleasant, we call this love. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very life energies become pleasant, we call this blissfulness. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call it success. Only to create your surroundings in a pleasant manner, you need the cooperation of all these people. But for pleasantness of body, pleasantness of mind, pleasantness of emotion and energy, it is one hundred percent your business, yes or no? Yep. So only to create pleasantness around us, we need, uh, because there are many forces involved, we need help from them, we need cooperation from them. Otherwise, anybody can make it nasty right now. But what happens in your body, what happens in your mind, in your emotion and your energy is absolutely your business. If you take charge of this, creating pleasantness in the atmosphere, you're at least competent to do it. Otherwise, you're always at somebody else's mercy. Why everybody wants to meet the most wonderful person? Why? I'm asking you, why the hell are you not that wonderful person? Huh? Why are you looking for that wonderful person to mess them up? <laughs> Andre, Andre brought up something uh, which is, is near and dear to me, and this is uh, this uh, fight or quest for inner peace. And, and I, 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 you, you, you speak about this a little bit. <laughs> And you speak about um, people's inability to to understand and 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 to not ask the right questions or to not seek properly. What are your thoughts on underlying mental health conditions as a uh, as a combatant to people's ability to find that inner peace? Do you believe in in true mental health as scientifically diagnosed? Are you not a believer in it? I'm not a believer or a disbeliever of anything. I'm willing to look at every aspect of life as it is. Is that okay? Everything's because okay. You, Who am I to say that it's not okay? No, <laughs> no, because you're continuously coming back to belief, believe. Do you believe this? Do you believe that? I don't believe a damn thing. Nor do I disbelieve anything. What happens when you die? <laughs> I love that laugh. Why, why are you making me die? Why don't you ask the question? What happens when, what happens when I die? <laughs> so guru, please, some, please. some things you know best only by experience. Sure, you want me to die right here, right now? And come back because and tell you us? Want to experience this it. will get a lot of views. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't do it. Uh, but seriously, do, do, so you, you, based on what you just said, technically you don't have a belief on what happens when you die, but surely you, you think some... I have just this year, in the month of February, I published a book called Death, which is on a top seller selling list for the last 10 months, continuously. Mm. The book is titled as Death, an Inside Story. It's only for those who shall die. That's, that's going to be, marketing. that's going to be, well, it's the, how could they and read it? like, this book is for me. 100%. Of course. And <laughs> You're a great marketer, so. <laughs> What happens when I die? Am I, well, I, well, maybe not me, but what, like, does one go to heaven? Well, which heaven you want to go? Because every religion has their own heaven. 
This is where it gets tricky. Now, now, See, now you've lost I'll me. Tell I, you, because I, you do not know what is in the heaven, let me describe it to you. Uh, in the Hindu heaven, food is very good. If you're a foodie, that's where you must go. In the other heaven, there are, uh, you know, long uh, white gowned ladies floating in the sky. You like that means, you go there. That one's Mike's. I like food. In another place, <laughs> in another place, you will encounter virgin problems. If that's what you're looking for, you go there. But what do you have to do to go there? You got to die first. That's an important thing. When you die, depending on your culture, we will either bury you, burn you, cut you and throw you to the birds, do something with your body. Because this body is a piece of this planet. When your job is done, you must put it back. If you have not done anything eco-friendly, at least this much you must do, put the damn body back. Some people are talking about going to Mars with it, all right? Hmm. <laughs> you must put it back. That is one sensible thing to do. I am telling everybody in the United States, I know I will become very unpopular. Why are you wasting cutting a tree when a man dies? At least plant a tree here. Because you make good manure. Have you seen those? Uh, have you seen those sacks? <laughs> have you seen the seriously? Yes, I know. There's there's these sacks you can place your body in, and a tree will grow I out of it. I know you don't need a sack. Also in India, we just wrap them in a cloth with salt and everything, and we put them there and plant a tree. It, All right. It, I gotta ask you: Is Mars out of play? Like in in the way of that you seek? Uh, why? How can I ask this question properly? Like if I get buried on Mars, mm -hmm. it, is Mars gotta, out of play? Your body material. Unless you want to be exported to another planet, you this material you picked up from this planet, when your job is done, it's best to give it back because it's just a loan. Well, some girls mother, that, some no, no, gr mother Earth gave you this body, thinking that you will use it for your well-being and put it back when your job is done. You want to steal it and run away somewhere. Well, some girl at Whole Foods once told me that I was just made of stardust. She was very convincing of it. She said, "We're all just stardust." All right. <laughs> I guess wrong. Wait, I, I guess what I'm getting at is this: like, I, no, I, let's let's finish this. Okay. So uh, these are all different offerings in the heaven. Sure. But the, this thing is, you must die first. When you die, we put your body here, no matter what, in which form we put it. We put it somewhere, either in a sack or a box or whatever. We put it here. So you went to heaven, and you don't have a body. Now, what do you do with good food and virgins, I'm asking? Oh, if you have no body, how could you take advantage of the good food and the virgins? I yes. it's, just like you're, it's like spirit food. Well, well, here's why this is tricky, because say, <laughs> say you die at a very young age. Seriously, this is where I get confused. What goes to heaven? Your soul? Great. Is your soul, is it... Is Which your, soul, right or left? <laughs> the left soul on my shoe. <laughs> The, is it the soul? Say, say, unfortunate, something unfortunate happens. A five-year-old dies. Does the fi does the soul of the five-year-old go to heaven or hell see, as a five as a five-year-old soul? See, does it go as the soul see, the at the age you passed there away? Is no, there is no line between what you know and do not know. That's why all this confusion. Right now, you do not know the nature of your existence, but you're talking about a soul because somebody told you so. I'm not questioning whether it's true or not. Hmm. All I'm saying is you do not know. Hello? I have no Somebody idea. may be, something may be true, but you do not know. That's the important thing. Because unless it comes into your experience, it's not there, isn't it? See, right now, if I close my eyes and sit here and doze off, all these people don't exist because they're not in my experience. Isn't it so? It's only what is in your experience which is true for you. Rest you're just assuming. If you concretize your assumptions, that's called belief. I, I, are you afraid of dying? <laughs> Do I look like that? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're a person who loves life. Uh, see, life is not my decision. Life has happened to me, okay? Mm. If we were able to cause life, that's different. We didn't cause it. Something much bigger than us caused life for us. Now, it's your business to see that it happens at the highest point. Because you've been given an intelligence, you've been given a capability, you must see it happens at the highest point. When I say highest point, not in a social context, but within you, you must be at your peak. 
Otherwise, you're a wasted life. Can I, uh, can I take a second? You have concerns that you have to pay your Verizon's bill. So you go with a long face in the street. No, the, the thing is just this. Right now, the only and only and only thing that you have is life. Rest is all your assumption. I think, um, you know, from, from religion to responsibility, from solace to solution, I hear um, in these conversations, and I'm really curious with the privilege that we have right now in this gathering and with Logan's influence and the influence of many people that are watching this, they don't know where to begin. It seems like a lot um, and, it, and it goes over their head. And so, no, no, we, it's very easy to make it very clear where to begin. Uh, unless you hop in with in between things like this. Right now, standing in the grocery queue is not even on his mind, all right? He's just throwing it because he thinks that is a philosophy which will counter everything. I want to tell you, I have become a strong uh, activist. When I'm just 12, 13, and at 14, 15, I'm thinking of joining, uh, joining armed struggle. So it's not new to me, that kind of logic, that kind of rhetoric, as if it's a solution for everything. Yes, intellectually, it looks like socialism, communism seems to be the ultimate solution. Please try it to enforce it and see what a mess it becomes. Go and see in other parts of the world where it's become an absolute mess, all right? So this is not because, this is not because I like something, you dislike something, it's not about that. Ultimately, when it comes to life, what really works for maximum number of people? That is the important thing, isn't it? Mm. Regardless of the <clears throat> success rate of communism or socialism or the grocery line way of thinking, right, that I'm stuck in or have not thought my way out of, uh, it is the way of things in this world right now, in, in many places, maybe not so much in other places. Um, what is the reason for that? Is it the teaching of the parents? Is it the education system? Is it mostly religion? Who is the main uh, uh, perpetrator when it comes to set belief systems? And as opposed to giving us a starting point for creating new belief systems, how do you create a desire for the teachers of the next generation to look out, think outside the box? See, uh, for a long time, in the name of religion, in the name of philosophy, in the name of ideologies of variety of kind, all sorts of things have been promised. And all the promises are elsewhere, not here. I'm saying, because you're all continuously talking about belief, if you believe there is a better place than where we are right now, up there. Why are you not gone, I'm asking? Doesn't make sense to me. If you genuinely believe there's up there a better place than this, you should be gone, isn't it? Hello? Well, well based, based on the religions that people utilize to believe in this better place, we don't get to choose the day. The day is chosen. You can cho choose the day. Hold on a sec. You can choose the day, it's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it just speaks into what we were talking about earlier, right? If we really knew that there was something outside after we die, if there was a heaven that we really knew, if we actually knew, then yeah, I would want to go right now. Yeah. But because yeah, it's that's because it's a belief, uh, that becomes a difficulty. Yeah. I'd, li I'd like to hear George speak uh, on this. That's, that's wrong. Uh, so like you said, life was given to us, so we're not allowed to take it. For example, I can't uh, take my own life and I can't take Mike's life. To redeem the reward that the Lord has given to me at the end of my time when he has chosen my time, not me. Because I haven't gone through what he's Fine. need me to gone through. Fine. Go through, sorry. I, I agree with you. You have no, you or anybody has no right to take life, yours or somebody else's. That is a given, all yes. right? But I'm saying, why is it? that the idea of a better place than this has come is because right now people are suffering within themselves. All right? Why are they suffering? I want you to understand this. Whether it's joy or suffering, essentially both of them are happening from within you. Is that so? Correct. If it's happening from within you, what happens from within you, at least what happens from within you, must happen your way, isn't it? Very true. If it happens your way, 
would you be blissful or miserable? I wake up every single day blissful. Blissful, I would presume. <laughs> Not presume, tell me. Yeah, If you had yeah. a choice, would you make it pleasant or unpleasant for yourself? Pleasant. Yes, I'd, pleasant. I'd probably go pleasant. Yes. <laughs> If you were feeling very pleasant, would you be always thinking of going to another place which is more pleasant? No. Right now, the entire human, this thing is set up on a better place somewhere else. Um, so before, like, because a lot of people, if I say this, people are going to comment down below, okay, sure, you feel that your place is great. But coming from a 2005, like five, George, where I'm working at a nine to five every single day and I do have a boss to answer to and I do have bills to pay and I do have responsibilities that I do not want to take part of. I still found those days just as joyful as the situation I have now because I, have, I invited the Lord into my life. So you're saying, why don't you just go there now? I'm saying I no, no, I'm here. not saying you should go there now. No, but you're saying, no, I'm not saying you're saying, but I'm saying yeah. if that was the, uh, the idea of like, if, okay, if there's a better place in heaven, why don't I just go now? Um, my, my combat was, why don't you just bring heaven here with you? I think that's what he's saying. No, no, that's, you're actually, that's what you're both on the same. That's page. what I'm saying. So I, do, but I don't. I am still looking forward to something greater. But I'm also bringing it here. So I feel like religion can do that. And I feel like see, I I've never said a word. I don't know from where you're getting this. I have never said a word. This is it or that is it. All I'm saying is, instead of simply seeing what I do not know as I do not know, you're making up things in your mind. Now, is it true that Major religions on the planet, unfortunately, are on a collision course all the time. Truth. True. True. Why? Because I believe one thing, you believe another thing. After all, it's just belief. Why don't we change it? The way it works. Because belief means you made it up. I, I think just the, the respect of you have your beliefs, I have my beliefs, we could still be on the same planet. But it's not worked, right? I mean, we're millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people have died in the last 500 years. Yes. Because of my religion versus your religion. Is that a fact? Fact. True. Yes. And I want you to believe, I want you to know this that all these people genuinely believe that they're doing the right thing when they killed the other people. They believed 100%. Right now, that man who goes and explodes himself somewhere, he believes. See, anybody who's, uh, who stakes his life for something, You can't question his integrity, isn't it? I'm willing I, to throw my life for something. I, I can question it. It depends what you're doing it for. But yeah, for I'm man. doing it for my God. Yeah. Who's different than your God? Do you, hear, do you see what he's saying? Yeah, but true. But if your God interferes with my life, then... So that you, so what, so that you, so what you just described is why there have been... <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm millions. saying. I, will, I want you to understand, side. every religion starts off with this. <laughs> if you worship the false gods, you must... What terrible things should happen to you? So... That has been the basis, unfortunately. What you think is right, is ab this is absolutism. That you think this is absolute. Everything else is not okay. I'm saying, the thing is, the most fundamental thing is, if you're truthful, if you're sincere about your life, what you know, you know. What I do not know, I do not know. If you really look at it, you hardly know anything about anything. That's a fact. And just when you're walking on the street, if you do not know how you walk on the street, if you think you know how you walk on the street, is there a difference? You're a bulldozer when you think you know what, uh, everything. When you don't know, you are a humble, nice, wonderful guy. Isn't it so? Depending on what arena you work in, being the humble, nice guy may not always be the winning tactic. <laughs> how, do you, how do you bring that humility into the sales world, into the stock world, or should those worlds cease to exist? Sadhguru. See, you're talking to me like I'm living in some Himalayan cave and I've just come up. <laughs> I want you to understand, I'm running, I'm running an organization with over 11 million volunteers with variety of activity across the world, all right? With various active projects which are every day have to be done and businesses that have to be run and the people on my hands all the time. So I'm not coming from a cave where I have no responsibilities, I have no nothing, I have nothing to manage. I'm sitting here and talking la la land to you. Come on. <laughs> so, you're, so, so I guess, so I, so I guess what you're saying is uh, uh, these exercises, these practices, this seeking is something that could be layered into the lives of just about anyone. Please tell me this. I'll do my best. It yeah. doesn't matter 
what kind of job you're doing. Even if you're a soldier fighting a war, would it help to be very balanced, sane, joyful? And then you will do, even if you have to kill, you'll only do it to the extent you have to, nothing more, nothing less. Right now, people are taking pleasure in doing what they're doing, isn't it? Something has to be done sometimes, unfortunately, if the situations force you to do it, but you will do it only to the extent it's necessary. But if you are not in that state, if there is a certain level of uh, angst, there is a certain level of anger and hatred in you, you will do things beyond the limits of what should be done. This has happened all over the world. In the name of nationhood, in the name of religion, in the name of race, in the name of caste, creed, every kind of thing, in gender, every kind of thing. People have done horrendous things. Why? Because they believe this is it, that is it, absolutism. If you see, I do not know, you will walk gently. Absolutism is the devil. Can I say that accurately? You, you're getting religious. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutism, no good. The worst. I, I have a question. Never taken a sip of alcohol, right? Huh? You ever taken a sip of alcohol? I don't need to because I'm always drunk. Ever Let's take? E ever smoke weed? I'm always stoned. You've not seen my eyes yet. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, uh, so I know that. I know that. So, so, so straight edge. But I'm wondering, as a as a fellow uh, person who's curious about life to the highest degree or as you would say, seeking, how have you not had the desire to try? See, you are living in Los Angeles. You think that is where life is. No, sir, I don't. I'm from <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why well, also, I heard a lot of overdoses last two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, see, you are living in a certain society. You think this is the only way to explore. I came up in a place where I made sure I'm not influenced by anything, either whatever the religion around me, the family around me, the community around me, the politics around me, I made sure none of those things influence me. If nothing influences you, it's, it's a, I keep telling people, see, I, I'm absolutely uneducated. They think uneducation means not going to school or college. No, uneducated means you did not pick up any ways of anybody's. You're simply the way the life is. Because your life, everything else is assumed. If you have experienced the nature of life that you are, and the source of life, which is also throbbing within you, why would you try picking up leaves and weeds? Huh? Aren't you curious? I, I know what, what you know through the weed, I know a million X over that within myself. So why will I be curious about something like that? Do you play with the teddy bear every day today? No. Yes, he does. Why are you not? He 100% does. <laughs> Sadhguru, he does. Are you not curious how it feels the child loves it so much? I went through the phase. I experienced it and decided… That's what, when you were a child, it happened. Correct. Right? right. So I'm saying I grew up when I was four and a half years of age. But even like, even like the nature of psychedelics and the mind-opening experience that some there people are, have that doesn't… right now, these 11 million volunteers have gathered and nearly a billion people are at, in one way or the other touch with us. See, I'm not selling tickets to heaven. I'm not offering uh, uh, miracles pulling out gold chains from the sky or something like that. No miracle, no tickets to heaven, no anything. Why do you think they're gathering? Because I'm giving them dope. You're no, selling no, no, drugs. Listen, listen, no, 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 don't Real stop dope. it there because it'll be dangerous. I'm giving them dope that no drug dealer can give them. If they close their eyes, they are gone. I know you're big on semantics. Huh? So what is semantics? It is not semantic. Well, you're saying dope and it's not actually dope. It's not weed. So what is it that you're, that you're selling? Like, what is well, your mission? What's your... Well, there is a lot of scientific research which says there are millions of cannab cannabis receptors in your brain. You think they're waiting for you to smoke weed? I don't know. But they are there. That's a fact. So obviously, the system must have something to provide that possibility within the system. It is not that you have to go and pick something somewhere. It is here, because this is the greatest chemical factory. If you knew how to manage this, you wouldn't be in the back streets. You would make it happen here. Getting high off life. Huh? 
getting high off life. Does, look, look does I understand. Body- I understand. I'm just saying, like, I'm also a fellow curious person, and I had the thought process that I cannot die on this planet not knowing what a psychedelic does to my brain. I, I, I refuse. That's something I, I, I wanted to try before I died, and I did. And I'm, I'm just wondering from a fellow person who um, is seeking how, how that doesn't uh, uh, titillate you in some way. <laughs> See, the thing is this right now. Uh, we are all sitting in the same place breathing the same air, probably we eat similar food. But this moment, what is happening within me, how I am, I will not exchange this for anything in the universe. You give me the world, I will not change it. That's how big it is. If that's happening within you, you won't go pick wheat. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so, 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 okay, so I'm lacking. So I'm curious because I'm lacking. Because you don't no, have... If uh, weed or whatever else gave you a little experience, you must understand Weed cannot experience, it's you who experiences. Weed might have stimulated some experience within you. Whether it is stimulated from outside or inside is the only question, right? If it is from outside, it always has a, a flip side of negativity. Sure. Right? If it happens from within, when they suppose there was, see, people are drinking alcohol. If there were no hangovers, if there was no liver uh, burning up, whatever, they would be drunk all the time. If you could be too fully drunk and fully alert all the time, would you do it? Everybody, I would advise them, drink alcohol, okay? <laughs> right now, that's all I'm telling you. There is a way where you can be fully stoned and fully conscious at the same time. I believe you. Um, you're also much wiser than You don't have to believe me. Here. You just have to check out my life, how I live. But I'm saying, surely you are in your early 20s, and I know, like, you grew up in the 60s. So when you, before you had the spiritual enlightenment, there wasn't a part of you that... Well, he said he aged at four. four. So, you, so you're saying that us intoxicated, we're at a level of here, but you sober are here, and you're teaching people that, from your past conversation, you're saying that if you wanted to try it once to tell your body you could be here, that's fine. But if you're going to consistently take it here, that's wrong. You shouldn't be using a substance to get you to happiness. Did it- The choice is this, suppose, uh, let us say, the compound wall of this house is uh, 25 feet tall. You've not seen anything outside of this, you always lived here, it was quite okay. Mm -hmm. But one day you went on a trampoline and jumped up and you saw there's a whole wide world out there. But for a moment and you came down, you again want to leap, this is addiction. You want to leap, leap, leap and have a little glimpse, little glimpse. So, what we do is, we don't put you on a trampoline because we know you will fall back. We teach you how to build a ladder. Nothing romantic about it, nothing exciting about it, building a ladder. You build a ladder, climb across the wall, the job is done. Why if, do you, what if I told you that acid you that <laughs> made there no, be no wall? What if I told you that acid <laughs> knocked that wall down into a pile of rubble that you never had to climb a ladder over ever again? Uh, that's not true. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my question is why, why build the ladder if you never experienced the trampoline? See, the For thing fun? is, that's what I said. It is not because somebody tasted a drug or somebody has got some teaching, somebody believes in a scripture or in a religion that they're looking. It is intrinsic to human intelligence to be wanting to be something more. That something more, if it finds very physical expression, we call it sexuality. If it finds emotional expression, we call it love. If it finds, uh, uh, you know, mental expression, we call it uh, what conquest or shopping or whatever. If it finds conscious expression, we call it yoga. This is not decided by you. This is the nature of life. It wants to be something more. How you choose to see? If you know only money, you're thinking more money. If you know only these kind of experiences, you're thinking of more experiences. If you know love, you're thinking of more love. If you know knowledge, you're thinking of more knowledge. Whatever you know, you're trying to hit the peak with that, right? How do you know you found the one? Love. Uh, how, you, the, how you know when you found the one? The right, the right partner in life. 
Oh. <laughs> I, I love answer, that laugh. I want answers. I want to laugh like that. One day. It's amazing. Do you need a beard to laugh like that? You have to. You have to have one. Yeah. You could probably start laughing like that. I'm too. close. Anyways. So anyway, this is not the uh, United States, nor is it 2020. This is uh, 1990. And uh, this is India, where things don't happen like how it happens here. Yeah, but that's all. I just looked at her, and in three days we were married. So, so when uh, when I went home, uh, my wife I said uh, because I everybody thought I'll never marry because that was the contention because I was living wild all the time. I'm camping in the mountains here, or there, and I have no interest in such things. One day I went and said uh, I'm marrying this girl. I, what? Who is she? I knew her. Pet name, you know, like what she's called. I mm. didn't know her full name. Then they asked, what's the father's name? I said, I don't know. I said, what? You don't know father's name? What's their caste? I said, I don't know. Then you don't know father's name. They, you don't know what the family is. How will you marry this girl? I said, I intend to marry only the girl, not the father. <laughs> <laughs> but did you know? I didn't know. You didn't know? What? Did you know, did you know she was the one? Absolutely. You knew. <laughs> but was there ever a time in the marriage you were like, man, I picked the wrong one. Like, this girl really is acting up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do those things. <laughs> you're, you're putting me in because, a... <laughs> because uh, we are not... See, I, I want you to understand this. I know this culture is just built up now. If you're looking how to extract life from somebody, anybody, Whatever kind of wonderful person you pick, they will disappoint you. Because you can't pick life, joy or pleasure from somebody else. Mm -hmm. If you're seeing that your life is an expression of your joy and you're seeing always how to do the best for the other person, it never will happen to you that, oh, did I pick the wrong one? Did I do this? Did I do that? So tomorrow suddenly you think this is the wrong tree and cut it off and put some other tree? It's stupid. <laughs> we look, I feel like we look for in our culture and it's just saying like, find my other half, right? Mm -hmm. Which in a sense is saying that we're incomplete by ourselves, right? And we're looking for joy in another being. And I think that's the, really the key is just finding that if we can have two wholes come together, right? And so I'm not, we're coming in, in union and relationship to not extract joy from one another, but to share joy within one another. How those guys become wise? Because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I've read quite a few of your books. <laughs> How are we on time? <laughs> I mean, I, I I could probably sit here and ask questions all day. Well, he's probably I, got places. To I go. need I need some answers. Have you seen the Matrix? <laughs> Which, Which pill would you take? take? Which <laughs> pill did you take, or did you not take a pill? Have you seen the Matrix? Let's start there. The movie. Well, I am the Matrix, huh? <laughs> you are the Matrix. <laughs> he is he's the dope. So wait, he's, <laughs> he's like, the ar he's the ball. architect. He's the architect. Do you watch movies? I want. Can we can we humanize yeah, you? I you want to the, <laughs> take you away <laughs> from this. Gandalf-esque wizardry for a second and humanize you. Do you eat cereal? What do you eat for Sun breakfast? Guru, please tell me. <laughs> well, I ride a motorcycle, you see. That's cool. Yeah. What kind, of, what kind of motorcycle? Well, I have a 1600 GT. It's a BMW. Fantastic. Oh, my, my dad has that motorcycle. He loves it. He loves it. It's, he said he's, he sold a pickup truck that I bought him <laughs> to buy the motorcycle. <laughs> he didn't tell me he sold the pickup truck and use the money to buy it, something else that I didn't give him. So I understand the love for the motorcycle. What'd you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, today. No, I just had brunch in the morning, not breakfast because <laughs> I, I normally get, get to eat only one meal a day. So what'd you, what'd you have? It's an Indian food. Indian food. What's your favorite American movie? Favorite American movie? Maybe Roman Holiday. Roman Holiday? God dang it, I don't know. You I know neither. I have no I idea. Suck, man. With a word. I nodded my head like I knew, but I had <laughs> How do you stay cool with so much clothing on? <laughs> because I'm cool. <laughs> okay. Very, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> What's the favorite spot you've been to in the United States? I don't go by favorites, but in the last few days, what I've uh, ridden through, like the Arch National Park, the Bryce Canyon, and the Zion uh, Valley. Oh, these are most amazing 
places where as nature goes, you turn. Yep. And most incredible. Have you ever had a near death experience? All the time. Huh? How many? <laughs> Too many to recount. What was the scary? Always uh, people, people always uh, said, uh, if there's no danger, Sadhguru cannot exist. So always he's creating dangerous situations for himself. Me too. I punched <laughs> a window yesterday. I got nine stitches in my arm. Because <laughs> I found out a Pokemon card was fake. Do you know about Pokemon? I've heard. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a good investment. It's a good so investment. I, I, think, I think we have time. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, just due to Sadhguru's time. Again, I can't just like the, the, the privilege that we have here with this platform, with, with Logan's audience um, and the millions and millions of followers and people that will watch this. Is there something that, you know, advice or something that you see in Logan that you think would be most beneficial that would impact people in the most positive way? I know there are many things. <laughs> well, uh, compared to a lot of people, he's uh, very alive. If he channelizes that well, the good possibilities. Mm -hmm. But in the mode that you guys have taken, I don't know whether you guys will channelize now or much later in your lives, because life is a combination of two things, a certain amount of time and certain amount of energy. Time is rolling away. You do something, you don't do something, you're happy, you're unhappy, Tick, 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 it's going away for all of us. It doesn't stop for any of us. We cannot say, today I didn't use it, let me roll it back. There's no such thing. Time is just rolling away. So the only thing that we can manage is our energy. Our energies we can manage in such a way, either it is, you know, very, makes your life very profound. These are two aspects when it comes to life. One thing is to make your experience of life very profound. Another thing is, your activity must be impactful. I think you guys are overly focusing on your activity being impactful, not invested on making your life profound. Because right now you think acid will make you profound, smoke will pro make you profound. Well, it gives you a facade. I didn't like. say that, I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Ask> question. <laughs> All right. So I'm saying it doesn't make your life profound. In fact, it makes you frivolous and it is also possible. I'm telling you, during my time, I'm saying uh, when I was in university, I, 13 of my friends over a period of seven, eight years, 13 of my friends died. Some to drugs, overdosing, some riding motorcycles too wild, you know, not knowing where the limit is, trying to ride like somebody else, all right? You can ride to your limit. You can't do what somebody does. Somebody else may be doing something else. You must ride to your limit. You must know where is your limit and you stay on that edge and see how to push that edge. But you don't try to do what somebody else is doing right now. So like this, 13 of my friends in seven, eight years' time, about four of them to drugs, remaining uh, nine of them to motorcycles, they lost their lives. They're all wonderful riders, they rode with me for many years. They're all... It's not like in United States, okay? This is like sitting on a mic uh, microwave riding in United States. There is nothing, just put it on the cruise and you sit. This is not like that in India. You're riding, an elephant can be on the road, <laughs> all right? And you need to be super alert and intuitive to ride at a certain speed. These are good guys very good at what they're doing. But somebody drinks and drives, you know, rides. Somebody thinks he can smoke and then ride, smoke up and then ride, like these kind of things. Or somebody, at any cost, he wants to go ahead of somebody, whatever. Essentially, not calibrating your energies right. Those who died, died. Many others, they became accountants, they became lawyers, they became something else. They're all my age now. When I look at them, they're all... They're all successful people. They got money, they got wife, they got kids, uh, all this. But no life in them. Mm. So this guy has got some life. Let's see how he handles and manages his energy because time will run anyway, whether you like it or you don't like it. Today gets over, tomorrow happens, tomorrow gets over. It's happening to all of us. 
So these are the only two ingredients you have, time and energy. What you make out of your energy is the profoundness of your life and also the impact of your work. Please, uh, all of you, make that happen for yourself. First and foremost thing is life should become profound in your experience. Then how you impact people, you don't have to worry. Whichever way you do it, it'll be for the best. But if you live on the surface and try to impact people, sometimes you will good, do good things, sometimes you will do terrible things to people, maybe with good intention, because most horrible things on this planet are done with best of intentions, not with bad intention. Sadhguru, thank you for blessing us with your wisdom today. Can we get a round of applause for Sadhguru, everybody? Fantastic. Seriously, seriously appreciate the, uh, the time. Um, yeah, for those listening, hit that subscribe button. We love you. Thank you once again for listening to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. And Andre, thanks for making this happen, brother. Of course, man. Yeah, yeah, we love you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hey, we love you. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace. <laughs>